Hello everybody and welcome to another top 5 board gaming video. Today I'm going to be talking all about a particular mechanic, the blind bid. Before I get started though, if you haven't done so already, please take a look at all my various social media pages as well as my Patreon page. On all those you'll be able to interact with myself and my channel in a whole bunch of really cool ways. So moving right into the blind bid, the idea behind this mechanic is that you have all of the players at the table essentially saying I bid this much but they're doing it in secret. So the idea is that you'll have some tokens in your hand that everybody flips over, you'll have a card that you place out and everybody flips over, something along those lines. With the idea being that everybody is spending that amount of money and then everybody loses it but the person who wins it, wins it. This is a really fun mechanic because unlike other auction games, it means that you essentially need to bid as much as you can afford to and what you think will win, but at the same time that you're willing to lose. So it's really, really intriguing. That said, you guys know I love to hear from you, so please let me know what your personal favorites in this category category are because I like to hear about the new games, I like to hear about your guys' experiences and all of that great stuff. But with that we're going to jump right into my number 5. At number 5 I've got the quirky but lovable Go Nuts for Donuts. In this particular game the idea is that you are selecting a specific card that you want to take for that round by saying what number it is and if you're the only one to pick it you get the card. The interesting thing about this is that while it's not necessarily blind bid because you don't spend resources you do have a lot of game theory behind it because the idea is I want to get a card but I know that everybody wants the same card that I want so maybe I'll select a different one because that way I'll at least get something. You have a point system very similar to Sushi Go where you've got points for having the most of specific donuts, others that are just worth face value points, and a whole bunch of other things. But that said, it's lower on the list just because it's not inherently blind bid. It's still a fun and very interesting game for a lot of different ages. Go Nuts for Donuts, my number five. And number four, I've got Libertalia. Similarly to Go Nuts for Donuts, this one does not inherently have a blind bid mechanic, but at the same time, the idea is that you're playing a specific role, and those roles are placed in order. And whichever person gets to go first gets to pick their treasure first. So in this game, again, you've got a lot of game theory behind it in terms of do I want to try to go last? Do I want to use the ability of the card? And a lot of really intriguing aspects like that. Again, you're not actually spending resources in a blind bid sense, but you're playing the players more so than you're necessarily playing the game in terms of what are they trying to bid, what are they going to be trying to do, and how can I avoid getting screwed over by them. It's a lot of fun. It's very meaty, much more so than Go Nuts for Donuts, which is why it's higher up. Libertalia, my number four. At number three, I've got a Game of Thrones, the board game. With the final season of the TV show well underway, I've been thinking a lot about this board game and how much it does so well. Amongst many other things, we've got alliances, we've got combat, we've got the intrigue of the players around the table, and we have, of course, blind bid. Blind bids with this game are associated with transferring some of the most powerful items, as well as dealing with wildling attacks. The thing is, it's in the middle of the list because while it does those things very well and you're spending resources directly and you get rewards for spending the most, the thing is that it can get lost with all of the other stuff that the game has to offer. Territory control, alliances, um, resource management, combat, movement, different units, just all sorts of different stuff. But the blind baiting aspect is very, very important in terms of who sits on the throne, who has the steel, who gets the crow, and a few other different things. It's really interesting. It's a ton of fun. Game of Thrones, my number three. And number two, I've got Viceroy. This is a very unique tableau building game where the main mechanic for actually getting new cards into your tableau is through a blind bid. The cards are available, everybody says I want this one and this is how much I want to give for it. And then after that you try to assemble it into your tableau where you're trying to make full circles with special symbols on the corners of each of the cards. It's a really fun, interesting little game. I haven't seen a whole lot of people playing it or a lot of press about it, but it's a really great idea and I love how well it was implemented and how smooth the gameplay is round around. Viceroy, my number two. 
And number one, I've got Virulence. The reason that this is number one on the list over Viceroy is because this is a very pure blind bid trick taking game. That's all it's about. The idea is that you have a hand of cards which represent specific numbers. You place down a card, everybody flips at the same time. Whoever has the highest number gets to take their uh, a card first. And like many of the other games on this list, we're talking about cards that give you specific numbers of points, cards that will give you points if you have the most, lose points if you have the least, all of that kind of stuff. But again, it's a very pure trick take blind bid game, plays very, very fast super easy to learn and a ton of fun. That said, you're not going to learn a whole lot about virology, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Virulence, my number one. Well, everybody, that's it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this video on my top five favorite blind bidding games. Again, this is a really unique mechanic in terms of how you're spending resources and the game theory behind how much you're going to spend and how desperately do you want something versus are you okay with getting whatever's left over. So it's an intriguing delve into the mind of the players as well as how you interact with your opponents. But with that, it's enough rambling for me. As always though, you guys know I love to hear from you, so please put any and all of your thoughts into the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on the mechanic, your favorite games with it, all of that kind of stuff. But with that, thank you very, very much. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.